Transit TV, welcome back to our studios to we continue our conference with the EPL this season. We have gone to that point where every game matters, every point matters, every action mistake, or otherwise in every game matters. Especially this year, we have uh, three a three uh, horse race. Usually, by this time of the year, the talk is that City is going to win the league, and the rest of the big guns will be battling for a spot in the top four positions. But this year. We're having a very special and intriguing uh, running or, or title challenge. Liverpool is firmly footed in their city is there and Arsenal, of course. At the beginning of this weekend, Arsenal was uh, uh, Liverpool was on top of the league. At some point yesterday, City was on top. And again, Arsenal went back top. Today, we know uh, City did at a 1-1 draw at Anfield. Anfield continues to be a boogie ground for Pep Guardiola. I think he has only won there once since he came to England. Today again, they failed to, to consolidate their, 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 their lead. And uh, again, City cannot just keep clean sheets. I, don't, I think in the last 15 games, they have only kept two clean sheets. This is a worry for all City Fairfields. We are here today to look at these games and uh, we also know that there was a big game as well for the last top four spots between Aston Villa and uh, Tottenham Hotspur. And that was a very surprising result in that one as well. We're going to look at that game briefly. Tottenham ran away with four goals away to Aston Villa. Aston Villa have, have begun to turn to the new Brighton, not consistent with their results, to their blowing hot and cold. Now Emery needs to get his ass together with his boys to consolidate a position in the table and see they will make the top four next season because there's a talk that there could be a fifth uh, European place for EPL, but it depends on how the EPL team is doing in Europe this season. So for sure, right now we can only be sure of the top four position. The fifth, the fifth uh, team could join in Europe next season, but uh, we'll wait and see at the end of the season how English teams do in European Championship. And for me, with me to look at this uh, intriguing weekend today, fascinating weekend, uh, is my man, ever regular, Ubum. And of course, yeah. George, a Chelsea fan, I've been trying to get him on this on this platform for a long time, but today we managed to catch him. Though he's a busy man, you can see he's, he can't still have it together to <laughs> stay in a place. He's a very busy man. George, you are... Welcome to the show. Choma will be joining us very soon, as the case may be. Ugum, Thank you very how's much. How's the weekend been? Yeah, it's and been again, okay. we have, before, before we continue, our viewers, it was uh, Ugum's birthday yesterday, and uh, Kai Havertz decided to make it a what a good uh, birthday for him, and uh, join us to wish Ugum in the comment section be a, a happy, and uh, of course, it was already a happy birthday, just uh, send your wishes across it. He's been a very strong member of this community and uh, he has done everything within his powers to make sure that this community keeps growing. We really, really appreciate you and I uh, hope you had a good time last night with your friends and your family. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, I did, I did. I'm thankful to be alive, uh, thankful to be healthy, thankful to be part of uh, the Transit TV community. Thanks to Reggie, thanks to everyone who has wished me a happy birthday. Um, you know, Kai Havas, like he said, uh, made my day, and I was uh, I was chanting 60 million down the drain." Kai Havas scores again. <laughs> yeah, game. so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm happy. Um, you know, results um, went as no way this weekend, so it's been a good weekend for me. Yeah, the judge, welcome to the show. Yeah. This is the transit community where we we try our best to give the in-depth analysis to games or preview to games and uh, entertain at the same time educate our listeners we know you have a very strong uh, a very strong uh, supporter and lover of the game and you have solid uh, mind towards the game as well we'll be we're really seeing we're really seeing to hear from you today on your thoughts of course like you mentioned already the title challenge, the title race, top four, and uh, maybe briefly, because we've not had you here 
since this season. Briefly touch base with your club, Chelsea. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you so much, my people. Actually, I want to uh, send a, first a congratulatory message to uh, our own brother, August, for his uh, wonderful birthday celebration. Uh, although I wish you well in your all, all uh, aspect of life, and uh, I pray that God will continue to give you more blessings as you grow older. I say amen yeah. to that. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you. Much. Before we go, ask hotel Jude just joined us. <laughs> this Real Madrid fan. Asna, Asna ran, ran away. <laughs> so, Welcome to the show, bro. Uh, <laughs> Ugum, happy birthday to you, bro. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. So good to see it's you. Not, Thank it's, you not, so it's, not, it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, yeah. anybody that, you know, sees another year should really thank God these days because right, um, right, right. a lot of things are happening in, in the world right now. And right. Uh, any day you wake up, in fact, you should celebrate. Yeah. The hardship yeah. is not only in Nigeria, it's all over the world. I mean, Absolutely. yeah, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good to have you, Jude. So let's quickly look at, you know, I don't know if anybody look at uh, Aston Villa, um, Tottenham Hotspur. Before this weekend, Tottenham, Tottenham, we are six points behind the uh, Aston Villa, though they have one game in hand on Aston Villa. I was thinking that Unaemi and his boys were going to consolidate that position and try to defend their, their, their feet on the ground for top four position finishing. But surprisingly, as they have been doing this season, blowing hot and cold, they, I don't know how that happened. After playing at the 0 0 first half, Tottenham went ahead and scored four goals in the second half. And uh, Una Emery, right now, I, I don't, their, their confidence, of course, has been shattered. I don't know how they're going to recover from this. It looks like uh, the top four might have been blown away by Aston Villa, though there are still lots of games to be played. But today, at home, losing 4 0 to your to your rivals in top four is not something that uh, should be. I'm sure Aston Villa fans right now are really hurt with that result and not happy with the team. So let me ask you so, do you think Aston Villa can still or will still make the top four? It was a big blow today, no doubt. Big, big blow, especially against the team that's just trailing them on the table. I am not sure that they will recover. The way that I see it, I don't think they will because, um, again, John McGain, who is the heartbeat of the team, tends to, even today, you could see he was the only person really fighting and driving the team forward. If he's not there, it's going to affect the team. Um, they haven't shown today the way that they played. They didn't show um, the, the, the intensity, the level of intensity, the level of desire that you would have thought they would show. Uh, granted, they played on Thursday, and they played a very important game on Thursday. They have another important game next Thursday uh, in the Europa Cup. So um, I guess that may have um, a level of fatigue that may have played, played on them. But I thought with the high line that Tottenham played, uh, with their fastest defender, Leaving the game due to injury, I, I had expected that um, Aston Villa would take advantage of it, but they were not able to do that. So, honestly, I don't see them making top four moving forward. With the way things are things are happening, United won their game. Very soon, they'll be knocking on the door. Uh, Tottenham is, uh, is there as well. So, yeah. I don't think Aston Villa will finish top four. Yeah, okay. The thing is, I don't know what their dreams were at the beginning of the season. I don't know what their expectations were. If if they thought they could, they would make top four. Because for me, at this point, I think at, I, I would have believed that Unai Emery would have gone to a more pragmatic approach to games, having found himself in this uh, uh, dreamland, then trying to consider like you know playing more of a defensive uh, approach. And hit uh, teams on the counter, try to consolidate his position. When it comes to teams like uh, Tottenham, you know, could remember last season when uh, Arsenal was in this position with City that we had an, we had an, a debate that uh, Tata should go to uh, Etihad and try to play be more pragmatic and not lose that game. And that's what I thought that Aston Villa should be doing right now because no one, I don't think they themselves had this expectation at the beginning of the season. But I mean, they've done well so far to be there. I, I expected them to be more pragmatic, but that game was frantic. It was end to end, and there was just no caution between, for the, the two teams. Obviously, uh, Postecoglou trusts his his players going forward. He believes that they they will always find a way. 
So there was not going to be any, any other way for Tottenham. So knowing that, I, I thought I expected that uh, Aston Villa should have probably found a way to notify in Tottenham and come away with it. Even at least don't lose. Like uh, they say at this point of the season, if you are playing a rival, if you cannot win the game, don't lose it. So you don't give them leeway in the in the contention. So I don't know. As I tell you, what, what should Aston Villa do to make top four? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think uh, for me, I think they they, they lost. They are losing focus. Um, they are losing focus, and um, it's in a bit. Um, Unai has this tendency. So, if he wants to make top four, I think he should just focus. You know, on the league, you cannot keep your eyes keep talking about the uh, European game you have, and then you know going into. Uh, and the, the Premier League game. So, what what, what, what his statement shows that he's conflicted, you know, somewhat. And and if he if he as the coach is conflicted in that manner, then you wonder what's playing on the mind of the yeah. of his players. You know, um, I, I saw the red card and and I know how bitter he was. You know about the 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 red card. Um, all of that. So, but it's pretty obvious. Well, there are still about ten or so games to go, and um, um, it's it's going. To, it's, it looks most likely that he can make top four, from what I'm seeing, <laughs> because definitely uh, the top four position is there for grabs. And if Man you keep picking up points, um, and then Tottenham and all of that, so he's not likely to. Uh, to make top four for me, yeah. I, I've, I've I've removed. I've, in fact, for me, he's out of the equation for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can see. I share your I share your emotions right there because the way Tottenham is is going, and Tottenham has a game in hand. So if they win their their game in hand, they'll be at the same point level with Aston Villa, uh, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult. And they have no no game between them anymore. Like you rightly said, Naomi needs to make, it, make up his mind what is more important. He already has his, his uh, pedigree in Europe. I don't know what he wants to prove going to try to win uh, win the conference league. I think he should focus on it because I know the day the team will, will benefit better making top uh, top four, going to Champions League than you know playing at that level that they are. Uh, I, I share your emotions, but it's going to be a difficult one. Manchester United yesterday. Let's touch briefly on that game. I don't know if you guys watched the game. I watched that game, and I, to be honest, I was very upset in the sense that uh, I know football result, results are if you score goals, you win games. United had no right to win that game yesterday, and they almost had, it had a three a three goal three zero win over. Uh, who did they play that game with again yesterday? It was, it was. I, I, I just, I just don't know what to say about United. But like you said, and this is what I've said in this channel many times. The only thing as a rival fan that I don't like about Manchester United, somehow they just get results when they need it. They will be so awful. But at the end of the day, the three points will be on the board. And pass for George, I don't know what. What did you? What are your, your emotions about Manchester United and the game they played yesterday? Yeah, but the team they played was also very poor. So you can't really I mean, I don't know what you can make of it because Everton hasn't been doing well. So you can see how their season has been and all of that. So, yeah, yeah, but on uh, on the on the game in hand, everything created chances. <coughs> they created lots of chances to score. They couldn't score and their defending was awful. You know, it wasn't anywhere resemblance of what Strong is known 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 for. You know, but I mean, like I said, at this point of the season, if you can't win the game, don't lose it. So if you if you if you know you cannot score goals, why are you being expansive? Why can't you know why not be a little bit more defensive in your approach? Yeah, George, it's sorry to <laughs> call you short there. Yeah, hey, what sorry. have you been about United this season so far? Well, uh, United right from the start of the season, uh, there was a lot of mistake by the coach. Uh, you know, he made a lot of mistake by. Uh, by playing the wrong formation and in the process now it has cost him a lot you know to say that they will they will win the game they will come up to uh, fourth position i don't think so 
Matter of fact, I still believe that Onai Omari will still come up and uh, pick up that what position. Because so far, this guy is a fighter. This guy is like a lion. He knows how to fight in Europe and, you know. So he, he had the point to prove coming back to premiership, having been there before, and then, and then he getting fired the way he did. So I still believe that, uh, you know, that uh, 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 Aston Villa still has, Aston Villa has a point to prove. Talk about United. United is it's more like, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, 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 a standing fan. They can go this way tomorrow and the next day you see them flying the other side. So you never can predict how they will come up, you know. <laughs> but I still believe that uh, they can be five or six, but, you know, saying that they will come up to top four, I don't think that's going to happen. Now, as for the game yesterday, I, if I say naturally, I, I have, my, my heart is going for Everton. Having this point reduction, you know, before the point reduction, they were fighting. They were going above, they were fighting above the bottom four or something like that. Then the moment that point was taken away from them, they cannot lose co concentration mm -hmm. and they start to go down a little bit. So I still believe that everything can 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 go can go above the water. But then uh, uh my you my you is gonna be in the fifth, sixth, seventh position. Matter of fact, as it starts right now, let me call it like I said earlier, I said that uh, this championship is gonna be between my city Liverpool, uh, uh, with your top there as Arsenal, then I'll take Aston Villa as your four, the Mayu as five, the top number six. That's the way I see it. So that's that's my call right now. So at the end of the day, you, your your champ is going to be Arsenal. So I want to give it to you as a Chelsea fan. I am, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's good to hear that from the Chelsea fan. Chum, let me ask you a big one before we move on. If Tottenham don't make top four this season, will it, will it be seen as a failure? Ah, uh, it it all depends on on you know who you're asking. Well, now you're asking me. Yeah. As another cl club person, in North London. Well, yeah, they they have shapes. No, no, no okay. Like, let's let's put it in perspective. Considering what uh, a Koglu has done so far this season, mm -hmm. what he how he has applied, you know, the impact he has had on the team, the result they have gotten. Uh, uh, what's his name? Harry Kane moving mm -hmm. to Bayern Munich and. You know they've been fighting all season. If they don't make top four, would, they, would you look at it and say you know they failed because it was, that it was there for the grabs? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think I would regard it as a failure because I mean it's Tottenham. They look like you know they are making it, and then they are not making it. I've you know I've always had a soft spot for them, but each time you try to think they are catching up, you know they bring in the new guy, he comes and makes lots of noises. It just doesn't happen, you know. But because it's Angie, you know, I'm excited for him. However, he makes it. But Tottenham, really, it's never in that top four conversation. Like, I can't remember for how many seasons. They just always drag their legs, you know, maybe a sixth or fifth. So it's not a failure. It's just, you know, it's their best right is what, what they do. So I don't think it's failure. It's just who they are. They don't like to join the party, the big boys, so. So, so where do you expect them to finish this season? Considering where they are right now. I mean, it's Tottenham. They always look like they're catching up. It's sixth or seventh. Like, I always say this, you know, like when we're talking about Aston Villa and all of that, good evening, you know. I, I'm sorry if there's, you know, a Aston Villa fan around, but he's a mid guy, a very beautiful mid club, mid manager kind of guy, okay? Wherever he is, you know, spotlessly, he's beautiful. But I don't see him doing more than. So, so, so are you saying United will make the top four eventually? Because if you can. Those guys, have you seen a wounded lion dragging its leg, making a mess, and still finishing a race? Those guys are very. You saw how they, they, they faked their life last season and went to Champions League. Fake life is what we know them for. So, watch out for those guys that are coming. Seriously, top four. Okay, it's interesting to hear that. Well, our viewers, let us know if Hedgehama has made the call at a very difficult time for United. That United is going to make top four ahead of Tottenham Hotspur and Aston Villa. Let us know what you think. Uh, yeah, obviously, it looks like the top three is confirmed. So, who's going to grab the, the last spot on the top four table? Is it going to be Aston Villa, 
in Tottenham Hotspur or Manchester United, like Choma has said, let us know what you think in the comment section. Anfield, Liverpool versus Manchester City. This game... But, was... but before we proceed, sorry, yeah. um, Choma, you know, I, I want to look at, at, you know, Tottenham, you know, sometimes I, I feel it's... It would be it would be nice to cut cut uh, Ange some slacks, you know. You, if you lose your key player, someone like Harry Kane, you know, who's your top goal scorer? Who knows how mm -hmm. to play um, in the Premier in the EPL, you know, so well, and yet the team has remained, you know, competitive. You know, I mean. They're in a good place. It's not. It, it requires them to just, you know, being play more, be more together, and they can be in that. They can still make top four. You know, I'm not giving up. I'm not really now that they can make top four. For me, the guy has done really well. You know, if you ask me, you know, to keep that squad together and getting the results that they are getting, even though it hasn't been very consistent, but. Again, look at the guy that left, Harry Kane, and what he's doing in Bayern Munich, even though Bayern, you know, for we haven't seen them have such a, uh, um, you know, uh, um, kind of points behind uh, the league leaders as it were. But you can see his scoring goals yesterday, he got a hat trick in that 8 1 uh, route of uh, mains. So, I mean, for you to lose such a striker and yet remain competitive in the Premier League, yeah, I mean, we need to cut and some slags. So we're, we're cutting some slags because uh, Harry left. But I thought the argument for how many seasons has been that Son is working in the shadow of Harry. Oh dear Harry, if you ever leave, that's if Levy left Harry earlier to leave, that Son was going to pick it up. Wasn't that the reason why they got the Brazilian? was the tall fella, Richarlison. You know, we remember he had bouts of injury and all of that, but like, this is not even an excuse for me, you know. Tottenham is, I mean, Tottenham, like, those guys are just, they are those guys, like, you know that bubble that keeps telling you, don't worry, we, we'll make it work, this relationship will work. You open your heart and it doesn't show up. That's how I feel about Tottenham. That's how I feel about those guys. Well, no, no excuses. Well, I, 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 I see, I hear you, and, and I also understand what Judy is saying. Like I said, that's why I said in the to if it was right now, I, I can't leave, and I don't think anybody expected Tottenham to be where they are right now. I, I thought it was going to be a very difficult season for them, and they've managed to push through up to this point. I, I believe for them to go another step, knowing who Daniel Levy is, they have to make top four. If they don't make top four this season, it's going to be difficult for them next season because they, they're not going to be money to be invested. Chelsea and Manchester United are, are trying to find a way to come back to where they belong or where they used to be. So they, ha they have to be in top four for them to be competitive next season. And if they do hey, that, let, for me, so far, what they have done, it will be it will be a very big blow mm -hmm. to the project and what they have done so far this season. Let me let me touch base a little bit on what's going on. You know, I actually thought that um, Tottenham has done well this very season. You know, they have actually done well in the sense that um, having lost their big guy, which is Harry Kane, and they was able to bring this guy from a lower league from somewhere like Scotland, it's, right? I think yeah, that's where he came from. Yeah, and then was able to do what he's doing so far. I think Robert uh, Tottenham and Chelsea. I don't think, when the, right from the start of season, I, I don't think uh, this season was actually when I thought they would do good. I'm actually placing them to be one of the top contenders coming next season. You know, because uh, uh, having lost the, the, the hurricane and then something with Chelsea. So I think by next season, Tottenham and Chelsea is going to be the top contenders. But not this, season, not this time around. But so far, I think they're doing good. Okay. They're doing good. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, Anfield, Liverpool host or uh, hosted the uh, city this afternoon, and that game was as I, I can I can imagine the number of people around the globe that watched that game today because so much about the EPL hung on that game, and it lived uh, to the bill 
was a very frenetic uh, game end to end. In fact, I was discussing with Ugum uh, off camera. There was at the point there was no structure to that game. It was all, all about okay. pride, pride and heart. You know, the team, the players, and the teams approached the game like it was a final, like uh, their light burned on it. And uh, two coaches, of course, this is going to be the last meeting for club and uh, Pep Guardiola and the EPL, except they meet in FA Cup or probably there's a as they, they thought that they're going to all both of them are going to take up uh, some national teams probably they'll say they will meet again as coaches so there was pride there was a lot at stake not just the three points not just the epl tattoo race but personally you know no one they wanted to lose their last meeting in epl it was going to be a historic game and it lived to be so at a point it, it, it looked like this, those players we are playing on drugs they cannot the pace at which the game was played and the passion and energy that was shown in that game was uh, second to none, considering the fact that Arsenal had won their, their game yesterday. So it was going to be any of them that anything that had lost that game today probably would be a little bit in a very solid disadvantage of winning the title. So let's let's look at the, the game and the key elements of, of that game. First of all, in recently Arsenal has shown that. The, no matter how beautiful your your pattern of play is, you can also gain points and win games from uh, set pieces and corner kicks. Before in EPL, it was lower teams that used to, you know, find their way back into games from set pieces and uh, corner kicks. Today we saw an inventive corner taken by uh, Man City, and they used it to onslaught Liverpool and got their goal. We will talk us through. This new dimension in EPL now that there's a lot of emphasis on set pieces and coaches, even for and corners, even for the top teams. I think the game continues to evolve uh, as we see. Uh, unfortunately, I wouldn't say unfortunately. I would say it, it, it will become unfortunate for teams that are not willing to get with the times and um, you know do what they need to do to advance. More and more young people are being encouraged to get into different aspects of, of, of the game of football. There's the data analysis part. There's the uh, yeah, project management part. There's the coaching part. And coaching, and now you see, you know, I, I was fascinated when I saw um, Ateta's uh, picture for Coach of the Month in the EPL. He stood right in there in the middle and had two two coaches on on each side of him, planking him, indicating that it wasn't solely his his success. It was the success of the team, and every member of that team brings something solid and tangible to the table, right? So uh, it's such a big business now. Not just the, the business of it; it's it's a big sport that you have people now specializing in specific areas. And from what I hear, the set piece, set piece coach at um, Arsenal would call the players on a daily basis, different players at different times, telling them what they are doing right and what they're not doing right, telling them what to do for the, how to prepare for the next game. So you see that for a team that doesn't prepare that way, you come and face a team that all week they've worked on something. The difference will show. You know, so um, anyone that's underplaying or or not recognizing the fact that set pieces have become, a, you know, be, be, being very good at set pieces, you know, it's no longer about buying tall players. It's exactly. no longer about buying muscular defenders. Yeah, it's been strategic. You know, yeah, it's no longer about being able to spin the ball. It's now about tactics, knowing where to start with your runs, knowing how to position your body, knowing how to... The, the strengths and weaknesses of the keeper of the other team and how to attweet that keeper and be able to escape their... You, you know, you capitalize on their weaknesses in, uh, during the game and generally, and use that in set pieces to overcome them. So, you see, um, Arsenal, for example, there's been a lot of talk about buying a new striker and all that. And one pundit rightly said that Arsenal's new striker for this season is set piece. Set piece has given them 18 goals, you know, uh, and that accounts for 
you know, a top the, the, the 20 The 20 goals a season that everybody talking yeah, about. Yeah, the, the 20 goals Yeah, I, I, I was looking at that corner kick by City today. And just, uh, just to support what you're saying, you could see that City had actually studied Liverpool. It looks like Liverpool do doesn't usually have somebody in their first post for the corner kick. Because I was surprised that between KDB and until that ball got to go to John Stones. I know Ake kind of showed the one of Liverpool's players, but you could see there was nobody in that front post. I, I know about the back post that most times some keepers don't like somebody to get the back post, but I never knew that that could be a corner kick and nobody's nobody is defending the first post. And I think that's what KDB saw and just put that ball there. Apparently they have studied Liverpool and see that that's how they play. Chama, let me ask you, like I said earlier, you know, in this game, and this is what Liverpool have been doing lately, today, there was more of winner-takes-all mentality in the approach that Liverpool and City took. Do you prefer that? Do you think that's a better thing to do at this stage, or do you prefer a more uh, a articulated strategy, the way Arsenal is approaching their game, regardless of who they are playing? You could see that there's a reason that is systematic uh, approach to their games. Liverpool, for now, has seen their last two, three games, and since, in fact, since Klopp announced that he was is leaving, Liverpool kind of just go out there, just play. Get the get the result. Anyhow, you get the goals. There is no stru really structure to the way Liverpool is playing right now. So, do you prefer that? Just go and get the result either way, or would you think that uh, the way Arsenal is approaching their games is a better way to go? I mean, first of all, there's Arsenal and then there's Liverpool. Klopp, um, Klopp is Klopp is a maestro, you know. However, we say it. So he comes and he announces that he's leaving. So we don't know what the behind the scene gist is, but we can see how it's just, you know, it's taking the layers of the synergy in the team. It's taking it off, you know, one after the other. Okay. You know, I mean, the official statement is that he, there are many injured players some of the key players are injured and stuff like that. So that's an official statement. But whether he's doing it like this or he's doing it the other way, he shall for my own gain. But do I want to see Liverpool in their never work alone, you know, glory and being shiny? Yeah, I want to. But as he's doing it now, that is the reason why we're no longer scared of them. So I can't. Yeah, yeah. So, you, so you prefer the more because it, I think they dragged much in one city into that as well. City threw away their their structure, and it was just a, yeah, and, a, a and they started end to end. You know, there was no structure. Yeah. That game today was, I mean, you could even catch your breath. You could even catch your breath watching it because of the people inside. As wow. tell you, let me touch base with you before that game today, Liverpool. I would say weren't they didn't have a shot on target, I think, all through first half until they introduced Salah. So what do you think is going to be the impact of Salah going into this uh, running for Liverpool? His fitness. Salah. Salah. Well, the, it's still a ma like I said earlier, it's still a massive ten or so games to play. And the three clubs are still in it. Nobody has the advantage just of yet. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, what happened today was just, um, for what I say, is the, the master class of uh, Pep and the uh, club. You know, uh, the, 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 what would have, uh, the extravagant side would have been that the, goal, the match could have ended 3 3, three goals apiece, you know, with, with so many one-on-one -on -one chances, uh, Fodin chances, uh, Doku chance, uh, Halan chance, and then... Uh, the penalties they were calling, uh, too. Uh, uh, yeah, so, I mean, if you give or take, it could have been 3-3, three, three, but, you know. So, but the truth is that the Premiership is officially a three-horse race. Any of those teams can get it. Um, don't be... Don't, don't think Liverpool is not... They are, they are, playing, they are playing to win. You know, course, and and I, I'm I'm happy for one thing because Arsenal, uh, th that game yesterday, I was very very happy that Arsenal won that game. On a good day, that's a game 
as now would have buckled, you know. But for them to find the resources to win that game at the dead of it, you know, uh, it, it it gave me a lot of joy. Even though, yeah, I'm not an Arsenal fan, <laughs> as, as it is, as it is. But I felt very happy for them that they could win that game. You know, it wasn't easy. They did they did their they did their best, but the game became very difficult uh, with Rams there coming in and you know. Um, yeah, we'll look at the game. We'll look at the, yeah, yeah, game. yeah. So I, I I can't take away. For me, I can't take away anything from Liverpool and City, the way they play. That was what the game was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah but, but, do you, but do you think Salah is going to be huge for Liverpool? Because it looks like when he's not there, they struggle to, to get their goal. Like today, they, that, that was... De definitely, definitely, definitely. He's, got, he's going to be massive, you know, for them, you know. And the, the momentum everyone in that sport had today... And the the how they, they they pick up the ball from the deep, you know, and and the transition in the game was master. I mean, it was something else, you know. So and you have uh, uh, if Darwin Nunes is fit and playing, uh, is Diaz is fit and playing, and everybody is playing at that pace uh, playing today. I mean, uh, there was a there was a split pass that Salah gave from the deep. That you know, the, that Luis didn't convert. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There was he did so many good man. things today, and oh, we are not oh, doing. Man. And went before God. he was in. So uh, for that me, that pass had nowhere to to to, to end, but inside he got. I don't know how that. I, guy I think he's going. He's going to be very line. huge for them if he. Yeah, if, yeah, if yeah. anything happens to Salah, yeah, George. Let, let me let me ask you. Can you highlight, you know, weaknesses of these three teams? Like okay, if you're an Arsenal looking at City, this is where you think City has issues. You know Liverpool. Do you do you, do you, do you see any weaknesses in these uh, three teams? And what you know who who do you think has a, you know a more highlighted weakness going into the race? As you have already said, Arsenal will win. City will be second. And Liverpool will be third. Why? What makes you you know say that? Yeah, I'm mute. Okay, let me. Uh... Uh, at, the, at the start of the season, I picked Liverpool to win this thing simply because of the structure they had in place with the hope that um, Salah will be fit all through the season. Fortunately, Salah is a little, it's not as fit as we have uh, expected. But having said that, you know, they still was able to come up the way they are right now. So coming to City, City is the runaway champions last season. And now they fight it harder to, to win it again. Yeah, the, the, the weak point I see in, 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 in City is if they can keep uh, their, their middleman, their talisman there from Belgium, if they can keep him on the field, uh, you know, injury free, they, they, will, they will actually go further. Then uh, coming to Arsenal, Arsenal kind of, they have been fluctuating back and forth before now, and they were able to find their grooves. Just like uh, Jude said uh, yesterday, that game they won, they were close to losing that game. They finally did they come up. And uh, that game actually proved that, it proved, it proved what I'm saying, that they're going to be the, the champs coming this uh, end of the season because uh, uh, the, the weakness I saw in them was their right man, the man on the right hand side. But every day I look at him, he kind of proved me wrong. It's like uh, this guy looks good at all times so the way it stands right now like i said before i'm not going to shoot for what i said um asna is going to be your new champion simply because they have been able to figure out their weakness and when uh, when uh, when the ghana guy went down injured then Janino come in and then Janino was the guy that actually chelsea needed you know but they let him go so Janino was the guy who can be in the middle and calm things down when everything is going that straight so that was the weak point they have. Now that have, they have been able to figure out that weak point and then fix it with Jordan Hall, I think they're going to be your new champion. Okay, Ugo, let's 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 look at let's talk to you on the strength side. You know, these three teams are right now they are they can beat any team in in the world. Arsenal is playing very good. City has done it year in year out and they're still the Liverpool of course with these two world class coaches uh, that Teta is punching above his weight against who, who, you know looking at their strengths 
can you help us highlight the strength and what advantage you know each of these teams have over the others going into the running? Are you talking about all three teams? Are you talking about yes, just Liverpool all and three, City? All three. Okay, for the strengths, uh, Manchester City have the the strength of the the strength of experience. They are they are a mature side. They are a well drilled side. They've done the same thing over and over and over for the past four or five seasons. Everybody knows that from January they've learned how to pace yourself. You see, when you run relay races, one of the things you learn uh, about relay and long distance races is how to pace yourself. You know the speed with which to start. You know when to turn it on depending on who you're competing against, right? If your opponents are not offering any serious resistance, you can actually keep the a pace at a certain way based on experience and still win the race. But when you come ac 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 across a competitor that knows what to do and they turn it on, you know at which point to switch gears and get on the next level. So that's what City does. You know, they, they have that um, advantage of experience and they know when to turn it on and really take it to the next level. Uh, apart from that, again, they have the benefit of the best coach in the world by far. He is a genius of a man, knows what to do to prepare a team, knows how to create a structure and a system that anybody can come in and blend into that system. You know, <laughs> when you see, I, I'm still fascinated, I'm still, you know, really intrigued as to how Guardiola keeps his these players hungry. Season after season after season. They've won the last three EPLs. They are still hungry for the fourth one. How do you keep a professional, you know, as compared to other professionals, so hungry that after winning, they want to win more and they want to win more and they want to win more. Right? An addiction. Yeah, it becomes an addiction to excellence, becomes an obsession, especially when they come across serious opposition you see them take it to the next level. So they have that, they have the coaching, they have the maturity and the experience. They, and then, of course, they are the best players in the world. They have the skills to make things happen. For Liverpool, Liverpool also have the coaching. I think Klopp is another genius of a coach, knows how to prepare a team as well. Very passionate, um, very smart in the way he deals with the press and he, he deals with his players. And he is able to also to, he has an uncanny ability to bring out the best in youth players. That's one thing about Jurgen Klopp, right? You, you see boys coming from the academy, almost every season he's been at Liverpool. He's who had one or two players that he developed that became, uh, you know, main team players and they are, they are making things happen. For me, again, for Liverpool this year, the biggest factor is the fact that Jurgen Klopp is living at the end of the season. He, he has reignited everything. <laughs> Again, when he made his pre press conference and I listened to it, I knew what this man was trying to achieve, right? He wanted to live on a high. His team, like Reggie has been saying <laughs> lately, they've lost all their, all their, you know, uh, uh, what I say, attention or whatever to tactics. Now it's all about the passion of sending out their coach on a high. Right, so they are fighting to the nail, bringing everything to the to the field, leaving everything on the field at every game. So these two teams, maturity, Liverpool, of course, um, Liverpool haven't won much, but I would say uh, they know how to compete at the highest level. They have a great coach, and the passion is there. But lastly, Arsenal, I say I would say Arsenal, for me, are the least prepared, so to speak, in terms of. Um, you know, the ability to win these trophies because they haven't won anything lately at that level, the biggest trophies. But what Arsenal have, number one, is a brilliant coach, right? I think Ateta is underrated as a coach. Uh, on, perhaps until he wins one or two trophies, people will start to now recognize and highlight his genius. He's a smart man, knows what to do. Um, coaching is there. And I also think hunger, sheer hunger for success based on failures of the past, right? They are now hungry to win that thing that has eluded the club in the past. Lastly, for us now would be the ability to learn from mistakes. 
I think that this team has shown that level of 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 of, of the, that ability of growth to, to to learn of growth, learn from what they've failed in the past and wanting to move forward. So yeah, uh, those are the things I can. Yeah, add. I hear you. I think I agree with almost everything that you said there, Judah. Let me ask you, Askote. I, I thought about the pass from Salah to Diaz. I watched that this Colombian crazy dude today. I was like, what does this boy eat? This guy ran riot against City all game. All Diaz. game. Diaz, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's how he plays, huh? So I know, but but, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, man. That guy, you know, t t talk us, you know, tell you how I like him a little bit because when I saw him today, I was like, does this guy get tired? No, I, I don't know. I, <clears throat> no, frankly, I don't know what I should say about him, you know. <laughs> this is, this is now in the league of uh, those players. Sure. Um, I remember when um, I said when I used to talk about some South American players, you know, most of them are very raw talents. They played football, not not academy. These are not academy players. These are raw from the streets, you know. Uh, the likes of Alexis Sanchez and those people. You Suarez, know, when you Suarez. see them, Suarez, exactly, you know. So they never get tired. They have uh, an exceptional passion, you know, and commitment to the game. They can they they, they can break their leg for you know the the mission they have on the on the field so it doesn't really matter and uh, luis diaz has been like that for for ages just give him any chance he will give you 200 percent in any game win or lose i'm telling you yeah ma ma matter of fact matter of fact uh, when i saw him playing for Porto, i i had my phone calling chelsea go get this guy <laughs> go and get this guy boy. They, 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 let me ask you one question before we move on from this game i was watching bradley the young man just like who was highlighting mm -hmm. before having a club and managing to you okay. know promote players from academy to to the main team i was watching that boy today even his body shape when he tries to play ball forward you would think he's a trend so but let me just ask you, I know it's going to sound crazy. Him and, and Trent, who will you prefer defensively? Don't, don't, don't say it. Don't no, say defensively, it. defensively. You have started, though. <laughs> you know the answer to this question. Me, I, I was raising hand for Bradley, by the way, because um, today, I was just looking at the guy like, great thing they happened. I was doing you. my own mental heat map. You know that heat map now that they share. I'm like, that guy splatter everywhere, every, the way he runs. I'm like, maybe this boy is hurricane and be wind. But the thing is, I know how you know football fans like to place somebody next to somebody. Imagine I, I went on Twitter, I saw Fodin versus Saka. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm in a good mood. I do not want to talk. But he, Trenty, you see Trent. Trent is still cooking, but we don't know. Trent is that. Trent is that footballer that keeps... You see that thing we're seeing with Ben White? Who agrees with me that Ben White is like every day on the pitch, we give birth to a new Ben White. Trent Arnold cannot be compared to Bradley. Yeah, Bradley may have use, you know, as an advantage, but what Trent can do... Trent is the only man that... When he crosses a ball, it's yeah, chaos. Yeah, yeah, when he his, kicks yeah, the ball, it's chaos. Is, his vision if he is. chases after his chaos, all he does is chaotic, chaotic wonders. So I can't even let me not even talk about it. Come on now, you know this now. <laughs> How about now? Yeah, well, I think we'll, we'll end it here with the city Liverpool have done some work on this on the game and the team. And like you said, there's only left to be seen. These three teams are firmly in the title race. Arsenal is there right now. And you can see his first, second, third, one, one point. Uh, I think, okay, Arsenal and Liverpool are the same point, actually. Arsenal is just uh, top with uh, on goal difference. I think no. seven goals. Yeah. While 11 goals uh, difference ahead of Manchester City. The next game is uh, Arsenal-Manchester City. I think uh, Liverpool travels to Brighton. So there are still lots of games to be played. 
you only wait and see have you asked let us know the the comment section who do you think is going to be the champion what's the sequence of the positioning at the end of the season do you think who will be first second third and fourth if possible let us know what you think and give us your reasons as uh, the games come thick and fast the popular epa running has started officially after today after jesse's game tomorrow to be 10 games left to the end of the season and uh, we have a three like you said officially three horse race in our hands three a uh, very interesting and uh, enticing teams very attractive teams they all have like we have help us to highlight they all have some very fascinating strengths to them and very few weaknesses uh, George struggled to to extrapolate weaknesses from these three teams that tells you the quality we have at hand in this competition this season going into the running so as uh, fans you can only hope that uh, your team makes the less the less uh, mistakes going forward into this team into these games and come up champions and the uh, the funny thing or the in intriguing thing is that these three teams have very funny reasons why they should win the league club needs to win and leave liverpool on the high city needs to show that they are still city and they're not going away from the competition as now needs to prove that Luta Teta, they have come of age to compete with the big boys so they all have cases to win the league this season and we can only wait and see uh, come end of may who will be crowned champion arsenal fans are wishing and a lot of neutral fans as well are hoping and rooting for arsenal and uh, we hope and see if their wish will come true